Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, we're going to learn how to use Python strings using Python 3. I created a Jupyter Notebook, and I'm going to put the link right down below so you can follow that link and grab the file from my GitHub site. You can run the Jupyter Notebook on your own computer and see how the examples work. And we're going to walk through a bunch of different examples, learn how to use a whole bunch of different functions for strings in Python. So there are detailed documentations right here in this link. So let's start with creating strings. We can create a string just by putting it in single quotes or in double quotes. And as you can see that we, we print out both of these, I'll run this. Boom, so you can see Tony, uh, Tony Stark is an, an Iron Man. So we, um, when we run this, it prints out both of those, ones in single quotes and ones in double quotes. And then for you here, we used quotes inside of quotes. So if you want to put a double quotes inside of single quotes, you can do that, or you can put single quotes inside of double quotes. So those both work as well. And you can see those quotes will actually print out. They're basically embedded inside of that string. And then in the third one here, we use triple single quotes. So you can also do that. So a variety of different ways to create a string, and they all work equally well. I personally prefer, I think it's just cleaner, to use single quotes. So I think throughout this video, I'm using single quotes on all of my examples. Next, let's look at uh, type, length, split, and join. So for type and length, we have those string up above that we just created, string s. And we can see that the class is str. That's the string, str. And the length of that, len of s, we just use len of s. That gives us the number of characters in the string, including blank characters. So that is Tony Stark is, that's Iron Man, has 13 characters. And you may want to get also the number of words in a string. There's no simple way to do that. So instead, what we're going to do is use this split command. We can split that string into a list, and then we can get the length of that list. So here we'll do len of s.split. Let's run this. You can see what happens when we split it. We get a list separated by the spaces. That's the default for the split command. And then when we print out the length of split, we get three because there are three words in that list. You can see those three words. And you could also split by anything else you want, a substring or whatever, a single character. Typically, people might want to split by a comma or a, a colon or a semicolon or something else sometimes. It's pretty handy. But you could split by a whole word if you want or whatever. Um, here I slip, split also one of our strings by A. So you can see what happens here. It finds each A. It pulls the A out, but it splits it into separate items in our list where each A was. And then we can also split by comma. I created a new string here that is uh, all a big clump of words joined by commas and then split by commas and you can see it nicely breaks that into a separate list. And then if you wanted to undo a split or rejoin a list of words for whatever reason, you can put as a join character, typically that is a blank space, but it doesn't have to be. You could put a comma in here, whatever you want, maybe hyphens or something, I don't know, dot join and then your, your list. So here my list is um, a list of strings but it could be just as well. It could be a variable, which is a list, and it will join that together into a single string. And you could assign that to something if you wanted to. Uh, I chose to just print it out. Next, you might want to check if a substring is contained in a string. And to do that, we use in or not in. There are also these little handy functions here, starts with or ends with. So you can check if a string starts with some substring or ends with some substring. Uh, let's run this and see how it looks. You can say Boolean result, which is true or false. So the first one, print dog in s. Well, let's see, our string s up here was Tony Stark is. So is dog in that? No, it prints out false. K and T, um, there is no K in string T that we assigned up above. K not in T, since the answer to this one was false, the answer to this one, of course, is true. If you want to test if something is not in a string, you can also do that using not in. And then the s dot starts with, that's the string variable s, starts with, and then our substring. And then the string variable s dot ends with, and then our substring in parentheses, and a quote. And it'll give you a Boolean result for each one of those. 
you can replace all substrings in a string. Uh, in my example here, there's only one substring. So we had a uh, string V here and we printed, let me run this, uh, boom. Captain America kicks butt. It originally said Captain Rogers kicks butt. So we found all the instances of Rogers in that string and replaced them with America. So this is the substring that we're gonna find. This is the one we're gonna replace. And I printed out the new string. Here we assigned it to the same variable V. So we actually overwrote V. You'll find that in a lot of my examples, I just printed instead of reassigning. So it didn't change the original variable. So here we have an, a variable Z, which is a string. Anton has three cars, Javier has four. And we also have numbers. This is a dictionary. The number one spelled out and then the numeral one. The number two spelled out and then the numeral two and so on. And this is one way where you could use a dictionary and the string replace function to replace all instances of spelled out words with numeral words. Let's see how that works. You can see how the string is modified to take out the word three and put in the number three and take out the word four and put in the number four. So this is an easy way to do that. We basically iterated through the key and value pairs of the dictionary and we did a global replace across our string for each one of those. If you wanted to change case, Again, here I did not assign the change case. I would have to say s equals s dot lower to actually update what is stored in s. Instead, all I did was print out s dot lower. So it takes what's in s, changes it to all lowercase, changes t to all uppercase, changes u to title case, which basically uh, capitalizes the first letter of each word. You can see what the result is here. Capitalizes the first letter of each word in title case. And capitalize, um, just capitalizes the very first letter. So I gave you an example where everything is in lowercase and it capitalized only the first letter in the sentence. So there are four different ways to change case. You can also check if something is case, if it is all lower or all upper, if it is a title case or if it is uh, alphanumeric. These are gonna give you a Boolean result so let's run this. You can see the first one, David, it is lower, it's all lowercase. The second one is all lowercase, but the question is, is it all upper? Well, no, it's not, false. Hulk, is title true? It is, right? We have a capital H, so every word in the string is capitalized. And then COVID-19 is alnum. That means is alpha numeric. So is every character in this string either alphabetical or numerical, and yes indeed it is, so it gives us a true result. And some more checks we can do on a string to check if it's numerical. Uh, is alpha, is numeric, is digit, is decimal? I think these do fairly similar things. So is numeric, is digit, and is decimal all return false if you put a decimal point in it. In case you should need these, I threw this in. This is not part of the str class. I had to import the string class, which is a separate class for this. These are basically constants inside the string class. Digits, punctuation, ASCII lowercase, and ASCII uppercase. So it gives you the full set of values in each one of those constants. So this could be handy sometimes if you want to check for existence or uh, membership in these groups of uh, things. Especially, I think, the punctuation sometimes. If you wanted to remove punctuation, it's easy to grab stringed up punctuation and then um, devise an algorithm for removing punctuation. You can strip leading or trailing characters with this strip function. Strip is going to strip both the left side and the right side of your string. L strip is going to strip just the left side. R strip is right strip. It's going to strip just the right side. And the default is spaces and carriage returns and new line characters, so these hidden characters, if you don't put any argument at all in the parentheses. Or you can add something in the parentheses. So let's see how this works here. Let's run this. 
So our character has a new line return and then a blank space and then Natasha's a spy and then a blank space and another um, new line. And then in X, we have a new line, she has red hair, and then another new line, but no blank spaces. So let's see, the first thing we print is W strip. So it strips out this new line and the blank space and this blank space and the new line and just prints out Natasha's spy, period. I added a period on so you can see where the, the strip part ends. So it successfully strips out these extra characters at the beginning and the end of the line. L strip only strips out the stuff on the left, but it kept the space and the new line on the right. R strip strips out the stuff on the right, but it left the, the stuff on the left, which is a new line and a blank space. So you can see it's actually indented one space. And then this um, fifth, fourth one here, w dot strip plus dot plus x dot strip plus dot. So this is kind of what we would want. Natasha is a spy dot space. She has red hair dot. So this is probably what you would you would want your sentences to look like when you combine those two sentences. And this is kind of an example of how you would most typically use the strip function, but there's actually, it's a useful function for a lot of different things. And lastly, you can also strip, uh, uh, this may look like a substring, but it's not. It's actually a list of characters. And it's going to strip, see here we have A-R-I-H, and we're doing a right strip on string X. So she has red hair. So first, we strip uh, both the blank and new line characters off of both sides of the string. And then we apply this right strip of A-R-I-H, all of those four characters. So in other words, it's going to find everything working its way over from the right. It does find the R, it matches on the I, it matches on the A, and it matches on the H. So it strips off all four of those letters that or that whole word hair and we just get she has red. So think of this as a set of characters all of which are going to be stripped over from the right until it finds a character here D which is not in that list and then it stops. And here we can do an example where we strip punctuation. So I use the string punctuation that I showed you up above and we do an R strip so that we can strip the punctuation off the right end of this line. Let's run that. What do you want without the right punctuation there? It strips all of that stuff off the end. Find and count substrings. So here our substring is A, and here we have another one where we're doing a right find, where the substring is do. Let's run this. So here we have uh, an A is the index, number two from the right, and do is the index number five from, let's just throw in a print statement here to print out y, to see what y looks like, and run that again. Yeah, what do you want? So you see the index number two, zero, one, two, counting from the left is an A, so that gives us index two for the first one, and from the right, uh, do, but actually that's index number five from the left but it searches from the right and it's gonna give you the first do that it finds. And then um, string w is Natasha's spy. This count function is going to give us a count of the times that a, our substring, appears in string w. So w.count, whatever our substring is, here it's a. And we get a count of four, there are four a's in that string. So in Python, strings are what's called immutable. In case you're not familiar with that, it just means they can't be changed. Well, they're not changed in Python's memory. Instead, they're assigned to a new memory space. And we can check the memory space using this id function here that's built into Python that gives us the memory address of a variable. So let's try this out. So we set m equal to the string black widow. We print out the id of m. You can see the ID right here, 4160, that's the memory address of Black Widow. And then we just add an S onto the end of it. We change the string so slightly by just adding one character to it, and what happens? We print the ID of M now, and it's a different ID. It saved it to a different memory address. So the original Black Widow is gone, 
and m is now stored in a different memory address. That's what immutable means. It means the original string is no longer available. The new string has been assigned to m is actually at a different memory location. And we can also add strings. If we print s comma t, we get Tony Stark is Iron Man. If we want to actually add those by adding them together using the plus sign to concatenate two strings, I added a blank space in there because without that blank space we would have these two words joined. And then I printed out Z, so you can see Tony Stark is Iron Man after we do the addition or concatenation. Concatenate two strings with the plus sign. Slicing substrings, if you want to chop out substrings from a longer string, here I used as our longer string just the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, and we print out just an index in this first example, z of 1, and what that's going to give us is just the 1. Let's run this. We print out z 5 to 8, so we actually start counting with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the 8 is 2 plus 1, note, so I put 2 plus 1 up here. So we're actually going to get only up until 7. So it stops one before eight when it gives us the result. And what do you think these will do? Print z nothing colon three. Well, the default here is, since we didn't put anything for the first parameter, it's gonna start from the beginning of the list. And we didn't put anything for the second parameter here, it's gonna go all the way to the end of the list, starting from the seven. And here this negative two is gonna give us just the last two items. It's gonna to go to the end of the list. It's gonna start from the second to last item in the list. And then this one uses the step parameter, which is optional. And we put a two in for step, which gives us every other item in the list. So from two to five with a step of two. So in other words, two, four, oh, that's the end. We reach five already. So let's run that and see what we get. You can see up until three gives us zero, one, and two. And then 7 onward gives us 7, 8, and 9. Negative 2 onward gives us 8 and 9 only. That's the last two items in the list. And then 2 to 5 with a step of 2 gives us 2 and 4. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.